then it didn't actually start recording. Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> try again. Oh dear. But anyway, this is it, folks. My last video of 2020, which means for the last time, we're all my 2020 intro. Big thanks to uh, French rock band Omelette for providing that fantastic song, My Playground. But nevertheless, hello my fellow Dream Chasers, Kenzie Retro here, and welcome to uh, another edition of Kenzie Retro's Top 10s, where I have a subject, I make a top 10 list, and uh, it's as simple as that. And um, following on from my top 10 games of uh, 2020, I've also got my mum on board for, uh, uh, for this. Uh, it's Hello been a, everyone. <laughs> it's been a while since we actually recorded something uh, um, from, a, uh, from a channel together. We've recorded a couple of episodes of Kingdom of Isolation. Players to that you can find up here, as well as my top 10 games of 2020. Uh, but nevertheless, um, this is my top 10 films of 2020. And uh, while we're on the subject of films, we, uh, we have uh, the Beauty and the Beast remake on in the background right now. It's on BBC One. Uh, right now at time of uh, recording but uh, of course it is one of the many films that is available on Disney Plus uh, but nevertheless fil top 10 films of uh, 2020 now I've, on I've only got my top 10 so no honorable mentions um, uh, for this list I know but given the way DC has played out um, kind of understandable that uh, I wanted to like keep it as simple as possible just having 10 slots uh, filled for the list uh, but yeah um, Couple of things to couple of things to point out. Uh, one, obviously, it has to be films that I've watched. Otherwise, I wouldn't have uh, a top ten. And number two, it has to be a twenty twenty release date here in the UK. And I am aware one or two of these films will have had a twenty nineteen release date as its initial release date. But uh, I stated over the last year or so um, that. When it comes to putting my, together my top ten films of twenty uh, films of the year from here on out, I'm going by UK release date. So, like I say, as like I say, a couple of these films will have had an initial 2019 release date, but as far as UK release date was concerned, came out this year. So that so that way, in my eyes, eligible for the list. So nevertheless, let's not waste any more time. Let's count down my top ten films 2020. So kicking off with number 10, and it is the Mulan remake. Now, a lot of fans, this one is a mixed bag for fans. Some fans enjoyed it, some fans didn't. I'm one of those that somewhat falls in the middle. Mainly because of the fact that there's one particular scene I was very um, uh, excited about. Um, need to... I will get that. I will get that light issue fixed. Don't worry. I mean, if needs if needs must, I can actually get. If needs must, I can actually buy myself one of those ring lights that uh, some of my friends use. But nevertheless, um, the one scene out of the entire film I was very much anticipating was, um, as I, we, we we both know what we're on about when it comes to the uh, the original when Mulan takes um, her dad's place. In the army, I mean, yeah. I mean, in the original, it's just the story of that particular scene, the animation, and the music as well. Shock and shock and horror. Me talking about me talking about music that I enjoy, <laughs> but um, that's it. That was all it was for that uh, for the original. The music, the visuals, and the story of that scene. No dialogue as well, and that's what made that scene so powerful back uh, back when six year old me watched it for the first time. I mean, I mean, even though I didn't have any idea how how important these sort of things were, because I don't, you, you don't clock, you don't clock onto those sort of things when you're younger. But you do end up looking back on it. You do end up seeing why some of those scenes stand out for you, and that's that's the one scene I was looking forward to when it comes to um, watching uh, this film. It was actually available uh, as part of the. Premier Access, so that, uh, because it was meant to be coming out in cinemas, but they needed to try and they needed to try and recoup the losses somehow, and that's where the Disney Plus Premier Access came into play. Um, but it is available for free right now on Disney Plus. You just need to pay your subscription fee, and then uh, that takes care of that. 
Um, but yeah, that scene in particular, it was just Mulan holding the sword, and then it cut to her already in her dad's armor, and then off home. Forgot to put spoiler alerts in there if you've uh, not seen the film yet. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, but I say like I say, all it was for, all it was for the remake was Mulan holding the sword, cutting to her already in her dad's armor, and then leaving home. And that was it. I was really somewhat underwhelmed by that scene. But as far as the overall product is concerned, it's it's definitely one it's definitely one of the better remakes that they've um done. And the interesting thing is they didn't actually have any songs throughout the film apart from over the end credits where we had Christina Aguilera back doing um uh, songs from that she did uh, reflection um back in 1998 when the um, original released uh she uh, she did uh, an updated version of that and also a new song for the film loyal brave and true which is what's written on the sword mm -hmm. of uh, uh, milan's dad which which i felt which i felt and the, the song the song loyal brave true it's it is really powerful and the soundtrack, and while I'm on the subject of the soundtrack, but like I say, shock and horror, me talking about a film soundtrack on the on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but can you blame? Can you blame me? I love music, and I and I especially love film soundtracks. I mean, the orchestra, the the film score as a whole was fantastic throughout the entire film. The the full orchestra for the more cinematic moments, like the um, like like the battle scenes, uh, for instance, and the cinematography for those battle scenes in particular were very very well put together and then of course you had the oriental music for the more intimate moments especially towards the end of the film but of course we all know how Milan uh, plays out but but say if you've somehow not got a Disney Plus subscription yet uh, de definitely give this a watch and uh, you can let me know your thoughts on it in the comments number nine now and this one is called the way back now those who know me very well, like my mumsy here, know, know how much I love my sports films, and this is another great one to add to the list. Uh, you've got uh, Ben Affleck, who uh, takes over as a, um, as a basketball coach at the high school he used to go to. So essentially, this feels like um, uh, a, 20, a 2020 version of Coach Carter, if that makes sense, where you've got uh, somebody who... Uh, you've got somebody who used to play basketball at their high school and then they come back to become the uh, the coach but what makes what makes the way back stand out is because um, Ben Affleck is also uh, dealing with his own uh, personal demons as far as um, as far as uh, alcohol is concerned uh, but I will say this it's definitely it's definitely a somewhat mature film because of the um, because of some of the subject matter in the film, like I say, uh, dealing with uh, uh, overcoming his um, alcohol addiction, and, uh, and and of course the and of course some of the uh, some of the strong language that's used uh, throughout the film. But um, but at the end of the day, um, I mean I mean right from the opening scene where you've got uh, where where you've got him driving his um, driving his truck and he's doing his day to day work, and it's. It's it's just like the it's just like the quiet piano music, uh, the piano score in in, in the background. Um, I mean that caught my attention right out the gate, and I, and I knew that I was and I knew I needed to watch. It. And then the ending, uh, the ending of the film, it um, it's definitely a case of leaving it up to the. Um, it definitely felt like leaving it to the audience's imagination. Where it goes from, where it goes from there, um, but as I said, I, I, I won't go into won't go into too much detail with that if you've not seen it yet. But, uh, but like I said, if you love your sports films and you enjoy Coach Carter, then this one I would definitely give a watch. Number eight now, and it is the first of the many many animated films that I've watched throughout twenty twenty. And uh, oh my goodness me, fifth. 51 years and the Scooby-Doo franchise is still going. How that's even ha how how it's still going is beyond me. But this is sort of a prequel. 
that makes sense. Uh, so, so somewhat of a prequel of how Shaggy meets Scooby. The film's called Scoob, by the way, folks. Um, it's a case of... It's sort of like a prequel, how Shaggy meets Scooby and how the Mystery Inc. gang um, meet up, come together, solve the mysteries. And they even got Simon Cowell to do some voiceover work for this film as uh, as, as some sort of uh, uh, as um, uh, a, a music guru. I mean, I mean, it's what he does best. He has America's Got Talent. He's got Britain's Got Talent. He's got the American X Factor. He's got the UK X Factor. He did Pop Idol, this, that, and the next thing. Uh, but yeah, um, that's it. And uh, lo and behold, even an appearance by who would end up be, uh, by who would end up becoming the villain of the film, none other than Dick Dastardly with his pal Muttley. <laughs> just a shame. <laughs> just a shame they don't have their uh, wacky races car or their. Um, Flying machine, snap the pigeon! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! But um, that's a a, gr a great a great film. If I mean, if you if as I as I I'm I'm probably going to be saying this a lot throughout this set up. Here. If you're a fan of what, if you're a fan of insert title here, but as I, but let's get if you let's say fan of the Scooby Doo franchise. If you haven't seen this yet, definitely give it a watch because it's a it's a great origin story of how the Mystery Ink Gang come together. Number seven. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> yep, we had, yes, we had an animated Spongebob movie this year. And it was Sponge on the Run. Now, it, uh, it takes, it takes um, bits and pieces from a couple of previous uh, Spongebob uh, episodes. R.I.P. Steven Hillenburg, the creator of Spongebob. Um, but yeah, um, a couple of bits and pieces from um, previous Spongebob episodes, such as um, uh, an episode where Gary, uh, Gary, who's, uh, a, uh, who's a, a Spongebob's pet snail, and uh, he just goes, Meow. he's a pet snail and he sounds like a cat. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> but but, that, but that's the... That's the genius creativity of the Spongebob um, franchise. But yeah, um, so Spongebob needs to get Gary back. And um, uh, let's say 1999, uh, it came out. Uh, my goodness, 21 years, and we finally know the secret formula for the Krabby Patties. I won't say what it is if you've not seen it yet. It's on Netflix. Give it a watch if you haven't already. Number six. It's another um, let's say another animated film, and it's uh, uh, and it's a, and it's a follow up. Actually, it's a sequel. Uh, Trolls World Tour, follow up to um, Trolls released in uh, twenty sixteen, which I actually watched just a couple of days ago. BBC One, but nevertheless, um, Trolls World Tour. We find out that there's actually more than one type of music troll in in this in this world because you've got because you've got the pop trolls, which is uh, Poppy, Branch, and those guys, um, but you've also got um, you've also got classical music trolls. You've got K-pop trolls, country trolls, and of course the antagonist of the film, the hard rock trolls, who want to turn the whole world into just hard rock. And uh, and some of them and some of the music and even even some of the song choices. Um, say, some some of them are covers. Some of them are songs that were written for uh, the film. Um, definitely, it, it, it definitely, uh, even though you don't spend that much time in these, um, in these, like, uh, different areas of the world, um, you definitely get, you definitely get that, you definitely get that vibe right out the gate, uh, which is, which is probably, uh, useful for helping, helping the youngsters, um, learn about different music genres, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. But, um, uh, but yeah. It's um I wouldn't say it was I wouldn't say it was as good as the uh, as the first film but it's it, it's it's still it's still a great film for the kids um it it was and it, it was actually somewhat the catalyst for um uh, for how uh, film releases have operated throughout this year where it was released um where it was due to be released in cinemas 
but at the same time it was going to be released on uh, video on demand services where because uh, on video on demand services the movie studios actually get a bigger um uh, a bigger share of the earnings from the film compared to uh, similar release because um, Universal, for instance, that's the studio that distributed the film. Uh, they only get somewhere in the region like sixty percent of the uh, uh, box office earnings if it was released in cinemas. Uh, but you going to the video on demand um, uh, route, and they get somewhere in the region of about eighty percent of um, all the purchases and rentals. Uh, which led to, which then ended up leading to uh, pretty much every major cinema chain, uh, be it uh, AMC, View, Odeon, Cineworld, end up essentially blanket boycotting all Universal releases in the future, which did not sit well with uh, cinema goers. But, uh, but nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, like I say, this is a great film to. Uh, introduce um, the youngsters to different uh, music genres. Oh, there's techno trolls as well. They actually have a Daft Punk song at the start of the, uh, <laughs> the start of the film. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I say I say it's it's a very clever way if you think about it of introducing uh, kids to uh, different music genres. Number five now and. <laughs> Okay, 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 I know, I know, I know I had to put that, I know I had to put that in uh, Green Hill Zone, but it's the movie version of Green Hill Zone. I'm of course talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, 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 no, 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 you, get that out of here. That is no longer to be seen in the light of day. That design of Sonic the Hedgehog, that was horrifying to see. The design here, ah, much better, my goodness me. Mm. That original design, no, oof, the backlash that got. But nevertheless, ah, uh, we have finally broken the curse as far as video game films are concerned. Video game films haven't exactly had the best reputation, they're normally very yeah. bad. But last year, Pokemon Detective Pikachu and this year, Sonic the Hedgehog, they broke the streak. They, oh, oh my word. I mean, definitely not what I was expecting for a Sonic the Hedgehog film, but Goodness me, Jim Carrey is just in his element <laughs> as Dr. Eggman. Yeah, see, he is he is actually referred to as uh, officially Dr. Robotnik in the film, but uh, he'll always be Dr. Eggman to me. I mean, I mean, the, I mean there are so many Easter eggs when it comes to um, this film, referring to like the different, like, different parts of the franchise. And I was like, I was like, even even the Sega, even that's <laughs> over the opening, even that's at the start of the film, uh, like di different pieces of music from the uh, uh, from the very Sonic games, uh, like uh, e I say the, the Sonic comics, the, and I think like, there's so many Easter eggs. I mean, I mean, I mean, I could do I could do just a whole video pointing out all the Easter eggs that re that uh, make reference to Sonic and the the franchise in general but my god i mean this this is definitely up there as one of the best uh video game films uh that i've seen i mean i, I said it when i i said it when i uh, talked about pokemon detective um uh pikachu in my top 10 films of 2019 this is how a this is one of the this is how a video game movie should be done but um but yeah, my goodness, uh, was it, um, was it, it's, it's actually on Sky Cinema um, uh, tonight, so uh, that's that's my evening movie sorted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number four now, back to live action now, and oh my, 1917. <sighs> I actually, I actually wrote a very in-depth, I actually wrote a somewhat in-depth review on Amazon when I watched this, um, well, actually, just just moment, just uh, like within the hour of finishing watching it, it's, it's on Amazon Prime right now. Mm -hmm. But um, the biggest thing I can praise this film for is the cinematography, like uh, the the camera work. For those that don't know all the film jargon that I'm trying, uh, 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 spouting out, but but like, but like I say, the um, let's say the cinematography edited. Edit, it's edited 
to it's edited in such a way that it's essentially one take mm -hmm. and not many films have actually been able to pull that off but 1917 set during I mean set during World War One uh, you've got you've got two friends from the same uh, battalion regiment trying to get uh, a message to um, a one half of the duo's brother um, but as I say throughout this whole film it's you actually see these you actually see them start to bond throughout this journey and the the emotional the emotional beats are pretty much on point throughout this whole film uh, I think let's say the I say even It's tough to put into words how amazing this film is. It even won it even won an Oscar for the best best cinematography. And it's and it's not hard to see why with the way it was edited. So massive kudos to the director Sam Mendes for this was like, this was this was essentially a, a passion project for him. But um, it's as I say it's definitely up there next to the likes of um, Dunkirk and of course the iconic Saving Private Ryan as one of the best war films that I've ever seen. So we're into the top three now and this next and uh, number three is a film that came out on Christmas Day on Disney Plus and it's Soul. I was really gutted that I wasn't going to be able to see this in the cinema, but while watching the film, it actually got it actually got me thinking during a, during one or two particular scenes towards the end of the film where it doesn't matter how you watch a film for the first time. The important thing is the important thing is watching it for the first time, regardless of where you are, be it be it in the cinema or on DVD or or, or even on a streaming service um, and how and how you felt during that first viewing experience because because if anything because if anything your first viewing experience of a film regardless of how you I mean it doesn't matter how you watch it be it like I say cinema DVD blu-ray streaming services the important thing is the emotional journey you went on when when watching the film. But and that's and that's and that's what I that's exactly how I felt when I was watching Soul. Um, that because the first trailer for this film it was um, what do you want to be known for on Earth and. And it's and it's at that point. It was at that point. What after what watching that trailer again after I finished watching the film, where that was that was when I realised, with ev based on based on how the film uh, played out, I. That's when I knew I was firmly set, on, on the pursuing uh, childcare and getting my childcare business set up, folks. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully, I should have that set up in the next uh, in the next couple of years once I um, once I get some experience um, at uh, college. Um, but yeah, this is it's it's one of the more intimate Pixar films that I've that I've seen, and that that's what makes it really stand out for me. The um, let's say, I mean, yes. You've got people. I mean, yes, the whole idea is that chasing, chasing that uh, dream or passion that you've got. But the end message at the at the end of the day is just embracing and enjoying the life that you've got. And 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 especially throughout this year, I've def I've definitely learned that um, that. 
Yes, there are going to be people that I'm going to lose contact with. There's some people I'm going to lose through other, uh, other means. But the important thing is embracing the life that you've got and those around you. And that's, and, th and that's the message I got from uh, watching Soul. But a bit, bit of advice, folks. I would avoid watching the post credit scene because given the fact it didn't come out in cinemas, the post credit scene doesn't make much sense. Whereas if it, if it came out in cinemas, the post credit scene would definitely make sense. So, like I say, my, my advice, avoid the post credit scene, but overall, definitely give the film a watch. Which, which makes the question, how are Pixar going to recoup their losses from, um, uh, from Soul? Because uh, Soul got released essentially for free on Disney+. Plus. So, how are they going to recoup the losses of the film? They'll get a dividend from Disney, from Disney Plus subscriptions, maybe? Possibly. Don't know. We'll see what happens. Not into financial wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, so I'll probably need uh, so I'll probably need my uh, extended household's um, brother to be able to take care, take care of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so number two, and it's the and it's the second of Pixar's films this year, and it came out just before um, we went we went into lockdown back in March, and it's Onward. Now, the one of the main reasons why I put Onward over the Soul is mainly because of the brother dynamic that was uh, portrayed by uh, Tom Holland and Chris Pratt who have worked together on, on a couple of occasions in the Marvel Cinematic Universe th through Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. But the biggest thing that stands out for me with this film is like I say, it's, it's, the, it's the brotherly relationship that um, that, that played out throughout the film. I mean, I mean, I mean, e even the whole, even the whole fantasy adventure element of um, of tr of trying to um, of of trying to un of trying to uh, unlock uh, the younger brother's full potential as far as their magic is concerned. It 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 really did strike a chord with the with the fantasy fans, but but on a deeper level. It, but like I say, it's the it's the brotherly relationship that really struck a chord with me uh, emotionally, of course, because because I I I grew up not having a brother. But um, you three sisters. Yes. Just my best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but 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 with uh, but with but with both of us being members of the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, I've got brothers in faith in the church, and I'm and I'm. And I'm get I'm getting more I'm getting more brothers in faith every day with uh, with the number of people that I'm meeting at various um, uh, church events that I go to, but um, I'll I'll say hopefully I don't have to wait too much long before I'm able to start doing that again. Uh, but well, like I say, it's the like I say, it's the brother relationship that struck a chord with me emotionally that makes this uh, beat out Soul as my as um, one of my favorite Pixar films. And then, um, of course, of course, one of my favorite films of the year, but not quite number one. No. So, what is the number one? Well, let's find out. But before we get into the number one, let's have a quick recap of the top ten. Like I say, no honorable mentions and no dishonorable mentions. But um, but I will give a quick shout out to Parasite, which became the first ever film in history to be able to win Best International Film and Best Picture in the same year. I was like, not very often, I was like, not very often, not very often I, not very often I point out something like that, but, but like I say, massive kudos to Parasite for that. Big congratulations to them. Nevertheless, recap time. Number 10, Mulan Remake. Number 9, The Way Back. Number 8, Scoob. Number 7, SpongeBob, Sponge on the Run. Number 6, Trolls World Tour. Number 5, Sonic the Hedgehog, number four, 1917. Number three, Soul, and number two, Onward. Mum's mom's, mom's already seen the list, um, so she knows what the number one is. But for you guys, this is what my number one is. 
Yes, I did have to get I did have to get the intro music in there. But I mean it's not very often I can say I can't fault a film. But this is one of those rare occasions where I can honestly say I cannot fault a film. Tom Hanks in it, what do you expect? Number one <laughs> is a beautiful day in the neighbourhood. I mean, in my eyes, Tom Hanks should have got the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for, for his role in the film. Mm -hmm. Tom Hanks plays Fred Rogers. And for, the, for my American viewers, you'll remember a show called uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighbourhood. Did the phone really have to ring? Just ignored it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... But nevertheless, like I say, a beautiful day in the neighbourhood. Uh, the, the relationship between um, uh, Lloyd uh, Lloyd Fogel, who's a, a journalist, and he has to do a, a magazine article on uh, on uh, Mr. Rogers, and the relationship that those two build up throughout the film. It's it's powerful. It's emotional, and I think. But like I said, I cannot fault the film. I mean, there's even there's even one particular scene that that was just powerful in so many ways. Just which which Fred Rogers actually which Fred Rogers did actually do in real life. Have um, the one silent minute film. Uh, the one silent minute uh, scene is without a doubt one of the best film scenes that I've seen in recent memory where as I say, as I say, they're, they're in a restaurant um, having lunch and um, just having that one silent minute to um, think about those who are no longer with us and and I actually I, I actually I actually went to see this with um, uh, a friend who I was dating at the time and I say, I say, we we both I say, we definitely I say, I say, it was a film it was a film I was looking forward to seeing so uh, she, so she so she came along to see it with me and we both thoroughly enjoyed it but I mean, at the end of the day like you, like you've just said Tom Hanks my mum's favorite actor believe it or not <laughs> so um I think I actually managed to get I actually managed to get, uh, actually managed to get uh, three Tom Hanks films for uh, fifteen pounds at HMV as my mum's Christmas present. One of the films being a yes. one of them being a beautiful day in the neighbourhood. Uh, I mean, uh, I've I've already I've already got a copy. I've already got a digital copy from uh, uh, Sky Store, so um, so so I, can, I so I can watch that anytime. But that's it. I will say this one more time. I cannot fault this film, and between the two of us. We cannot recommend this film enough. Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that's and and that among many other reasons is why A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is my number one film, twenty twenty. So there we go. That is it for my top ten films of the year. What are your favourite films of this year? You can let me know in the comments uh, below. And if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a Dream Chaser like myself, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom, click the bell to join the Dream Chaser's notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that's it then for 2020. I'm going to... Uh, part of me is going to be glad to... Um, part of me is going to be glad to see the back of this year. But... If... Just part of you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, well, the whole, well, the whole uh, pandemic lockdown restrictions, that part I'm going to... That part I'm going to be very happy to see the back yes. of. But as far as everything else is concerned, the way the way that I especially have managed to overcome everything that's been thrown in front of me this year, living by myself, not many people, not many people to. I need to take this. Right <laughs> Not many people. Not many. Um, I can. Nobody I could. Nobody I could contact. No. Nobody I could see. Until restrictions started to be lifted. Right. But. I'll say this right now, guys. 
everyone that has supported me throughout this year, thank you so much for all the support that you've given me, be it in person or just with messages, calls, and other things on top of that. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me this year. The love and support... The love and support that you guys have shown me throughout this year, I... I honestly couldn't be more. I honestly couldn't be more grateful for the support that you guys have shown me this year. So, here's hoping 2021 is a much better year for us, especially with the vaccine being, especially with two vaccines being rolled out now: the Pfizer vaccine, which was at the start of December, and we've got the Oxford vaccine on the way as well. Just got approved earlier this week. So yeah, all I can all I can say is thank you so much for supporting me throughout 2020 and I hope you guys have a wonderful new year I hope you guys are staying safe and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in 2021 so happy new year guys and for the last time in 2020 this is Kenzie Retro signing off thank you and good night I didn't ask for a free ride I only asked you to show me a real good time I never asked for the rainfall At least I showed up, you showed me nothing at all It's coming down on me Water like misery It's coming down on me I'm ready, ready now I'd rather be dry But at least I'm alive Rain on me Rain, rain, rain on me Rain, rain I'd rather be dry But at least I'm alive Rain on me Rain Rain, rain on me Rain on me, living in a world where no one's innocent Oh, but at least we try Gotta live my truth, not keep it bottled in So I don't lose my mind Yeah, yeah, I can feel it on my skin It's coming down on me Teardrops on my face Water like misery Better wash away my sins it's coming down on me Let it wash away yeah, I'd rather be dry but at least I'm alive Rain on me, rain, rain, rain on me Rain, rain, I'd rather be dry but at least I'm alive Rain on me, rain, rain, rain on me Hands up to the sky I'll be your galaxy I'm about to fly Hands up to the sky I'll be your galaxy I'm about to fly Yeah I'd rather be dry But at least I'm alive Rain on me Rain, 
rain, rain on me, rain, rain. I'd rather be dry, but at least I'm alive. Rain on me, rain, rain, rain on me. I hear the thunder coming down. Won't you rain on me? I hear the thunder coming down. Won't you rain on me? Rain on.